I'm looking for a job and I'm the ideal candidate in every conceivable way. Extensive job history, insane soft skills, but something's holding me back. And no, it's not the brain rot, it's my leak code rank. So let's fix that. If you don't recognize it, this right here is leak code. Simple concept, problem on the left, type your answer on the right, some tests will be run and it will tell you how terribly you've done. Now there's hundreds of completely relevant problems for developers. I can't even count the number of times I've had a JIRA ticket to reverse a linked list. Yeah, I reckon that one there's about 200 story points. The real issue is, between the gym and the bookies, I'm bad from the bookies. What's that? You yeah. ain't no fucking rookie. I can't find any time to actually complete any leak codes, so I'm not going to. Now if we look at problem one, all it's asking is that I find out which two numbers add to make another. Pretty simple, right? A task I'm sure ChatGPT is more than capable of. Now you probably just thought to yourself, this fucking guy, he's just going to get ChatGPT to solve everything. And you're wrong. Well, you're kind of right. I don't have the resilience to sit here for hours on end copy and pasting questions and answers to and from leak code. As a wise philosopher once said, I reckon we can automate that bitch. So let's get started. So for example here, I want to extract the problem text from the left, package it up into a little message and then send it to GPT. And then GPT will respond with a lovely You're answer poor. saying not enough tokens. I'm free good as shit. So instead, let's have a look what Zuck's cooking up over in the metaverse. 950 gigabytes. No, hell no! Okay, payment confirmed, let's go again. Small problem here though is GPT wants to give me an entire live story. And after listening intently, I've decided it's time to make a change. A career change. You're now listening to a fully qualified prompt engineer. And I've already been replaced by AI. So now that we've spent all that time coming up with the best possible prompt template, we can send that to GPT with our problem. And once we've got our response, we just copy and paste it into the little box on the right. And that's potentially the most awe-inspiring formatting I've ever seen. If I ever see a pull request like that, it's just getting Insta approved. And the efficiency. Forget low latency when we can just have work in. Perfect. So now that we had the problem solving working, we just need to write a little bit of code to navigate around leak code. Firstly, it's impossible to navigate to all the problems without knowing the names of all the problems. And I'm not spending my time extracting all that data. Luckily for us, we were saved by this little button here, which just goes to the next problem. Second, clicking test is all good, but it doesn't actually submit our answer. So there's no proof we've actually done anything. And submission can take a bit of time. So we just need to check if accepted has appeared anywhere on the screen before continuing. And lastly, submitting shows this result box on the left, which is nice unless it doesn't disappear when you go to the next problem and covers the definition. You wouldn't believe how hard it is to just click this little button here. But once all of that is done, we have a fully fledged leak code solver. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. Well, not shit actually, because it never gets it wrong. Almost as if it's seen all the problems before. But I wouldn't be a good tester if I didn't examine all the cases. So a bit like when I was talking about we just look for accepted, we look for a word you know very well, failure. If that appears anywhere on the screen, we know GPT failed. And if it has, I just grab this little text bit down here and send that to GPT. Which in theory probably causes GPT to go into an infinite loop because of how badly it takes criticism. Thus rendering me completely broke if I'm not paying attention. 